and it's the next day because it got really late last night. Um, anyway, so I've got these two Captain Hook connectors on the end of the intake temperature sensor. So I'm going to plug that in and then plug it into the MAF connector. And then we're just going to wrap this around so it doesn't come out. It's not pretty, but hopefully it is watertight. And we're just going to tuck that out of the way. So now we've done the intake temperature sensor, we've done the MAF delete, uh, and we've done the timing. The next step is to remove the OEM narrowband, which looks like this. I sprayed a bit of penetrant onto the threads so that I could remove it with a crescent wrench and I'm replacing it with an AEM air fuel ratio gauge. Okay, let's open up the box. You get your gauge itself. Let's remove that nicely. It's your gauge. your instruction manual which we'll probably be looking at to see how we wire them more stickers this is I think one of the cables that goes behind here and it looks like it routes to the mega squirt or the ECU and we've got the aftermarket Bosch oxygen sensor Here's the other loom that goes into the sensor. And a welded bung with some crimp tools and a rubber band, but I don't think we'll be using this because we're going to replace the old narrow band oxygen sensor and a pamphlet. Remove the cap from the oxygen sensor and it's already got some anti-seize on it and some crush washers, which is good. And we'll just put that on to the ma exhaust manifold. The next step is to route this cable through the firewall because this connector connects to the oxygen sensor and this end connects to the gauge. I think I want to run it into the main loom which is at the corner there. Hopefully the camera can pick it up, it's quite bright. But yeah, I'll put it down through the driver's side top right and then feed it across the middle into the center console. I might need to move the fuse box to get a bit more access. My hand's a bit big. Oh my goodness, that was difficult. So, I ended up using this wood extension thing, tied the end of the connector, and pulled it through. And looks like I've looped it around there, so I'm going to have to pull it back and pull it back around so I don't damage the other wires. So I finally managed to cut off all the tape off the end of this connector. It was a lot harder than I thought and pulled it through the firewall up there. So I'm going to route it into the middle of my center console or my tombstone because this is going to be its temporary position just to make sure that everything works. This is the other cable that will go behind the gauge. The different colors here refer to stuff like switched on, the 12 volt, the ground, the wideband output, and the blue I believe is the dimmer function. So for this AFR gauge I read that um, the white, the 0 to 5 analog output positive, will go back into the engine bay into the OEM clip, which I have to cut off from the old narrowband sensor. Um, this blue wire here that I have in my hand will be the power ground. It's going to be routed from the black of this guy, this one. It's going to be soldered to here, and that's going to be going into the engine bay to be grounded on the back of the intake manifold.
right, so like with any other project, um, I came up with a funny plan that requires me to remove this blue cable here. And my plan is to use this kind of cable. It's got a higher gauge uh, thickness of the copper inside. Now because the AEM Yugo air fuel ratio gauge goes, one, one, of the, one of the black wires, well the black wire goes to the back of the intake, the other one goes into the original ECU loom, which is this yellow one over here. And that was plugged into this guy, which is also yellow, which was plugged into the old narrowband oxygen sensor. So there are two things that are coming from the footwell through the firewall into the engine bay. And I thought instead of two different cables, and they're both around here, why not I just use a, a, double, a double wire so it looks a little bit cleaner and it finish off, it probably split, I'll split these guys apart when it gets to around here so it looks a bit cleaner and it's grey not blue so it looks a bit similar to the engine bay to help me remember I'm gonna use the wire with writing as the ground and then the one with just a straight no color just the grey will be my um, cable to the old ECU loom sorry not ECU loom um, <gasps> white band O2 sensor loom. Alright, so this is the old plug that went into the narrowband sensor. I'm going to cut it, solder it together, and use that as the sensor. Okay, so we moved inside the garage. It was getting a bit dark. I had to stop for dinner. Um, but let's continue where we left off. The gray wire was routed inside the engine bay. Um, the one with the white writing, which is at the bottom here, is the ground, which was grounded on the chassis via the intake manifold. So that's the black wire here. Um, on the AEM Hugo air fuel ratio gauges, the brown is the zero to five negative voltage. So um, it says that if you don't have, if your um, ECU doesn't have a negative, you route it the same way as the brown. And then the white one here is the gray wire without any writing. It's just the plain gray. That's your signal wire from your from the the wide band into your ECU. And this goes into the original loom inside the engine bay where we cut the O2 sensor from the older narrow band. And this red wire up here is the power. And I've, I've just found the uh, accessory, accessory on. So when I turn the key to accessories, this wire goes to 12 volts. And I've just looped it around. Haven't soldered it yet, but I just want to check out the gauge. So let's uh, plug in the connector from the gauge into the Bosch sensor and see what it says. This is the cable that came through the firewall on the left hand side of the engine bay and this is going to be plugged into the Bosch sensor. Um, goes in this way. The supplied Yugo sensor is factory calibrated via a trim resistor. Integral integral to the sensor connector and requires no further calibration for the life of the sensor. However, the ability to perform a free air calibration is provided for users that wish to do so. So it says here that I don't actually need to do a free air calibration, so it's probably good to go. just my alarm all right that looks good so I'm guessing air fuel so that if the number is greater there's more air than fuel and if it's a lower number there's more fuel than air well there's less air than fuel than 20 so right now the, the engine's not running so I'm guessing that's correct now that I know the gauge is working I'm gonna tape these three cables closed and then square them away as well as the sensor the ground and properly solder in the power wire 
I'm melting. All right, now it's time to start the car. It's in neutral. Hmm.